Hello, good morning, Leah. Good morning, Allison. How are you today? Well, I'll be honest, I'm not great. I've been suffering migraines all week, which I know that some of our viewers probably, and you as well, are familiar with, but it's, it's just, miserable. it's miserable. And like we were talking about before we got on here, a lot of times, yes, there's, it's really painful, but sometimes that's like, that comes last. You get all this other weird stuff that's going on. Like my hands are all clammy. <laughs> You know, uh, yeah. it's like you feel sick. Yes. On top, it's not just a bad headache. Good morning, yeah. Liz. Good morning, Judith. Good morning, Tara. You're all here. Good morning, everyone. But I also wanted to show you, because today, the way the weather is, my shirt today, when it rains, it pows. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I got that for Christmas. <laughs> That's a good one. Yes. Thanks. How are you today? I'm pretty good. Tired as usual. I woke myself up in the middle of the night because you know how I dream. I, do. I, I have very vivid dreams. Vividly, and, and then, sometimes violently. <laughs> yes. And in my dream, I was part of a, a, a reality TV contest. Like, like I was a part of a contest. And I discovered that like one of my component, my opponents was cheating. And uh -huh. like, but he, but so he came after me and I'm like running through this like theater and I burst through these doors like out onto the street and it's like busy New York street, like with all these people. Uh -huh. like, but like, I knew that I had to yell like with everything I had for the cameras to be able to catch it. So I pushed through the door and I yelled, cheater. Oh my God. And I, yeah, I actually yelled it. Like I woke myself up. The oh dog my gosh! Was like, what was that? But yes, I woke myself up yelling, "Cheater!" <laughs> as hard as I could. That's really was, funny. Um. Yeah, I'm just in bed. What is what is going oh on? Oh my gosh! You needed yeah. the world to know, and you needed to. I mean, clearly, you wanted to win that competition too. Right? Yes. I forgot about that mug that you have. I love that mug. Oh, yes. My crossword puzzle mug. Yeah. It's every now and then. Go online. There's, there's a web address on the bottom. You can go online and finish the crossword puzzle. They put a new one up all the time. Yes. I think about that every now and then and how I need to try to find one like that. I like that. <laughs> That's cool. Um, I got one of, some, one of my coworkers a um, crossword a day, like tear off calendar. Mm -hmm. that she has like a little puzzle to do each day at lunchtime. <laughs> I like I like crosswords, and I will go through a period where I will get very into them, and I can do them, and I can you know actually finish them, and then I will step away from it. And when I try to start again, it's like I suddenly know nothing, and I can't finish yeah. one. It's like yeah. you have to get into the rhythm of like knowing like that creator and like the kind of clues they create they give yeah. you. And like once you figure out like that creators mm -hmm. how how they how they work, you can yeah. do them, but it takes a while to get to get there. And even like the certain, even just like crossword types of answers in general, because I've done when I do crosswords with people sometimes, I and I do a lot of crosswords. If I do someone with one with somebody who doesn't do as many, I'm like Oh, this is probably the answer. Like, well, you know, we don't know. I'm like, no, that's just, it is the answer. That is how they, they always use that word in crosswords or, you know, this person is usually, this person's name, the arrangement of letters in it is usually, you know, yeah. it's a good crossword word because it's got mm -hmm. a lot of vowels or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> like, you, you get to know, you get to know yeah. like, how this person yeah. does crossword puzzles. So right. <laughs> it takes you a while, like, to get into like a book of them or something. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah. My yeah. my mom is a big crossword puzzle. She does all kinds of puzzles, the cryptograms, like the, mm -hmm. all all of it. She does. I can't figure half of them out. Yeah, um, that is what my coworker. Do, the one thing she doesn't do is the Sudoku. So she mm -hmm. always leaves the Sudoku puzzles for me to finish. <laughs> I like those too. I like those too. My grandma does those like obsessively, and I I like those as well. Um, I did those before I did crosswords, and yeah, my coworker she does. She gets those puzzle books and she'll do like most of those different types of puzzles. And she yeah. likes those cryptograms. And I've never been able to get into the cryptograms. The thing I like about crosswords is that, yeah, sometimes you don't know what the answer is. Sometimes many things could fit there. But just generally speaking, a lot of them have right answers. And the cryptograms 
I feel like I have to guess some and I don't like guessing and then having then like going down the wrong path, you know, yeah. and something about crosswords is like a little bit more defined that I feel more comfortable with. I think like that's one of the things that I love about Sudoku is there's no guessing. There's only like one right answer and mm -hmm. you're able to figure it out based on everything else on the board. Like it or just, you get stuck and frustrated oh, yeah. and never come back to that one. Yeah. <laughs> I have found that if I just walk away from it and I come back yeah. to that puzzle like three days yeah. later, I'm like, duh, it's right there. Right. That's <laughs> the nine. Put the nine yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So. Well, good morning. Puzzle talk. What have you been reading? Um, I am reading the fifth book, I think now, in the uh, Timber Creek Canine Mystery Series by mm -hmm. Margaret Mizushima. Um, you've been, you've been, like we've heard about that throughout, I think. Yeah, I'm one of those people, like, I will admit, after the third book, I was like, you know what? Let's take a break. And I read two romances and now I'm back <laughs> because you have to, right? Yeah. But now I'm back into it again and I'm on book five of that series. Um, I don't know. I just enjoy it. I enjoy, you know, yeah. like the slow build love story that's going on and yeah. um the characters and the, the dog, I like the dog. It's, yeah. but it's not like, it's, you don't get anything like from the dog's point of view. It's all mm -hmm. from the detective, not the detective. She's the canine officer, uh, Maddie, Maddie Cobb. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm, I've am i been enjoying that series. I keep going back to it. It's, it's interesting because it's a mystery, but it's not like, oh my God, I have to pay attention to every single detail kind of. So yeah. I can listen to it while I'm like, filling out the, the schedule at work and that kind right. of thing. Right, yeah. Um, Carol says that she likes to read series. Um, and I know, see, yes, reading, like series readers are very committed. Mm -hmm. um, and I tend to burn out, like, and actually this is something I was thinking about based on some of the authors I'd written down here to talk about today. But um, even, even books I really like, like I really liked The Witch Elm by Tana French. And then mm -hmm. I read, the Searcher by Tana French. And I liked that too, but it was like, I see some of these same types of things coming up and I feel like, I, I just, it doesn't, I'm not as interested because it's like, oh, everyone has a head injury <laughs> or whatever, you know, <laughs> everyone's been in a fight and I'm still gonna like listen to more of her books, but like, I definitely couldn't do it like Back close to together. Time. Yeah. Good morning, Carrie. Um, I, and I, I think that's part of why I took a break after the third yeah. one, you know what? I need a little break from this because it, it does. You do like they might use a phrase. You're like, you used that phrase before. <laughs> there are only many, so many ways to describe the way the dog yawns, you know. Right. Um, so, you know, I took I took a step away from it. And yeah. then it's like, but I just want to finish it. So I, yeah. I can do it. Um yeah. although I don't I think she's still writing them. Most mm -hmm. of the time I will not. I'm really bad about like not starting a series until it's finished because I hate the gap because I forget what has happened. And then I feel like I've got to start at the beginning again. Yeah. So, but, um, but yeah, this is one that had been on my list for a couple of years and I was finally just like, just read some of them. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, uh, speaking of series and a series that I am probably going to, uh, continue with is I read the I read the first book in the bromance book club series <laughs> it's called bromance book club um and I know that we had slightly mixed feelings about that on here I feel like there were a couple comments that people didn't care for it too much I actually really liked it um I listened to it on audio it was my first time listening to like a contemporary romance book with a male narrator or like a male narrator and I think that's because I mean, it is the Bromance Book Club. And I think one thing I liked about it was that you do hear both perspectives mm -hmm. like throughout. So you also hear, you don't always hear the male perspective in yeah. a contemporary romance either. And so I kind of liked, you know, seeing what was going on with both sides. And I mean, I'm not going to say it wasn't like hokey, but it was, I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> and I will be reading the author's Lissa K. Adams. The series is the Bromance Book Club. And there's actually the fourth one is coming out this summer. There's already three. And um, so I, but I wanted to tell you, Leah, I hadn't had a note here. Um, there is a scene 
Well, there's several mentions actually of washi tape in the book. And I thought that that might draw you in. And there yeah. is a scene in an art supply store. And I just thought you might appreciate that. I'm sold. I'm going to have to go back now and, and, and give that one another try. Like I started it. I started the first one in the series and I got distracted because like a book that I had been, I've been like waiting for came in. I think it was oh, yeah. um, the Addie LaRue book. I think that's the one that came oh, in. Well, yeah. I dropped everything for that one. Right. Um, so I never went back to it. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like Carol has started reading ML Longworth set in Provence. Twisty and good characters. Nice. Good characters. I like, I like Twisty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, another book I've been, another book I read and finished um, is an advanced copy of the next Grady Hendrix book. It's called The Final Girl Support Group. And uh, the final girl is the last girl left in a slasher movie, the one who yes. makes it out alive. And so um, in this book, uh, there's a support group of a set of final girls. And um, it's, you know, like our world, but not quite like our world. Their movies, are they're not from real movie franchises, but they're based on, you know, real slasher movies, yes. you know, from our world. Um, and so... They were all the final girls in the real crime that the movie series was based on in each of their instances. And so the, the book is set, I think, in 2010, and most of the women are around 40 or over in their 40s or late 30s or so. Um, and so they have this support group where they meet and, you know, they've met over the years. And um, but something is beginning to try to, like, pick them off. They're like one of their monsters is back, basically. Yeah. Um, and the author Grady Hendrix is just a really, I mean, he writes horror, but it's like also there's, it's a horror and humor. And then this like nostalgia kick and sort of like a wink to a lot of different genre stuff that makes mm -hmm. it for me less horror-y and less scary. Um, it is kind of gory, um, but I really did enjoy it. And it comes out in July. It's called The Final Girl Support Group. And Grady Hendrix's other books include uh, the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, which also had mixed, re mixed reviews on here. Um, and My Best Friend's Exorcism and Horror Store. And Horror Store is a really fun one because it's like, it was like a demonic portal and a store like Ikea. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like based on Ikea. Um, so they have to like spend the night in this in this Ikea store. And like, you know, I don't know. So that one was like a fun concept too. All of, and it has like a fun layout, um, a fun graphic design. Um, so Can anyway, <laughs> yeah. And so, so Grady Hendrix is just like, there's nothing quite like those books that I've read before. And there's that nostalgia kick, which makes it fun. I think. Mm -hmm. I just checked out another book that I kind of, part of me is like, did you talk about this book? Um, cause it sounded a mm -hmm. little bit familiar. Um, yeah. my lovely wife by Samantha Downing. Did you talk about that book at one point? That does not sound familiar to me. Doesn't mean I didn't do it, but. <laughs> because it it was one of those, I haven't started it yet. And the cover of the book is like a woman holding a knife, which is kind of, you know, scary. <laughs> but it sounds like it's also really funny. Like, I think I was reading a lot of descriptions one day because I was pulling books for a, subscription book bundle. Yeah, sure. And um, if I'm remembering correctly, this is the one that it was like, it was like her secret identity and like, but it sounded hysterical as well as murdery. So yes. <laughs> it's just like, I have to check yes. that one out. Um, yes, I like it when there's something to sort of maybe lighten the mood a little bit or yeah. balance out. Yeah. So I want to back yes please do in each of Grady Hendrix's books that I've read there's been like one scene where I've been like what's gonna happen or whatever but for them but other than that where I've been like grossed out by something that's happening yeah. or like creeped out in the vampire one there's like a gnarly scene with some rats and I was like Ugh. um but beyond that yeah that all that other stuff and the tone of it like keeps mm -hmm. you from being like too keeps me yeah. from being too and that's what that's kind of what made me think of that other book that I checked yeah out. it feels like it's it's scary but at the same time like oh you know there's like something that's funny about yes. it like many titles make you think that yes. and, yeah the yes. way you're describing it I was like it made me think of that book that I just checked out nice
Uh, let's see what else. I well, this is not something I've read, but I have. This is totally. I told you I try to keep my things. Try to like segue. I'm mm -hmm. going broke. Um, <laughs> I watched this past week every available episode of Mayor of East Town on HBO, Ooh, and the finale is. will be like this weekend or whenever it's the next episode. And yes. um, I got the HBO app or and uh it was it's it's been really good and really engaging just talking about something that's really pulled you in and like yeah. i really i've really really liked it <laughs> me too i'm i'm loving that show and my mom and i are watching it and we watched um not the last episode that aired but the one before that and i'm like ah! like i did one of my, my <laughs> screams like when we were watching it because something happened that i just yeah yeah wasn't expecting yeah it was like one of those it, yeah it was phenomenal and yeah. um it's called mayor m-a-r-e mayor of east town it's on hbo and it is phenomenal um yeah. and one of the things that i really love about the show is mayor is like a 40 year old woman like she's like you know probably 40 ish and she looks 40-ish, you know? She's got wrinkles and she's, you know, it, mm -hmm. I just, I like that. It's like, yeah, sure. because so yeah. often, like, people just look unimaginably beautiful. Like, yeah. And it's just unrealistic. But this show is not that. And I yeah. really like that. I like that too. And I think that that kind of, goes for most of the people on yeah. the show. You know, they, they, even if they don't look like average people necessarily, because just Kate Winslet's always gonna look like Kate Winslet to me, but um, they look like people in their circumstances would look, you know, like the friend, her friends, you know, mm -hmm. like they all, yeah. they just look like people who you might know. And that's exactly refreshing. Okay. And the houses aren't like, big yeah. mansions and it's just it's yeah it's really refreshing i like that in that very first episode in one of the very first scenes she's at her that the elderly woman's house mm -hmm. and her refrigerator is covered in magnets <laughs> the woman's refrigerator is and just stuff stuff like that you know yeah. like that's yeah, i don't know it just seems very realistic. Yeah. <laughs> right. oh and guy pierce looks like a rundown guy pierce um mary says <laughs> Yes. I won't get too far into it, but his hair is got it is it's a mane. There's a lot of a lot of guy Pierce hair going on. Yeah. And Carol thought we said mayor instead of I mayor. also before I began watching the show and like typed it in, thought it was the mayor of East Town yeah. as well. So you and me both. <laughs> <laughs> and Melanie, it looks like. So yeah, I mean, it's a little confusing. Yeah, it's it's not a, a name you hear a lot. I, what is her real name? I forget because I don't know. I don't know if I it occasionally. Would it be like Meredith or something? I don't think it was Meredith. We'll have to well, somebody we'll have to look it up. No. <laughs> <Get on it. laughs> right. Well, speaking of like, well, I guess literally speaking of HBO shows, but um. Yeah. We're going to segue. I'm doing one of my segues. Um, I, I can feel it. <laughs> the last time I downloaded the HBO app was to watch Big Little Lies, which was based on a Leanne Moriarty book, book or see, book. Um, and I did, and I watched all that in the time of my free trial and canceled it and was very pleased with myself. Um, <laughs> but she has, she has another two things. She has a book coming, another book being made into a show on Hulu that's, I think, premiering in August. Um, okay. But nine perfect strangers is going to be a show on Hulu. Melissa McCarthy's in it. Can't remember anybody else, but it's it is a. I think all all of the nine perfect strangers will not be perfect strangers to viewers. I think they are all um, well known actors, and so I'm kind of excited for that because her stories are always like they're like juicy. They're yeah. like rich people, but under the surface, all this you know stuff is going on. I don't know, and so I think in my nine perfect strangers, I think they're all at some type of like wellness resort. I don't know. Okay. It'll be. I didn't look too far into it. I know I will watch it, and I know I'll be like, oh, or whatever. <laughs> um, and then the other thing is that she has a new book coming out this summer called "Apples Never Fall," is what I think my handwriting says. That sounds correct. 
Um, and that's coming out, I believe, sometime this summer, if not early fall. Um, yeah. But I've been starting to see that promotion for it. So if you're a Leanne Moriarty reader, there's a new one coming um, and a new show as well. Speaking of books to movies, mm -hmm. um, Patrick Ness's The Knife of Never Letting Go is being turned into a knife, K-N-I-F-E. Um, the Knife of Never Letting Go. Okay. It's it's a YA book. Um, and I actually listened to the audiobook of it because it, it's and it's really interesting because um, they live in this world where you can hear other people's thoughts. Um, <laughs> what a terrible thing. <laughs> well, it's but it's all men. Like it's all men and you can hear other people's thoughts. And then this one boy, he discovers a girl in the woods and like there are no women. So it's interesting. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, like everything happens for, like er, things just start sure. happening then. But, okay. um, but the really interesting thing about the audiobook is because they live in this world where they can hear each other's thoughts. There are times in the audiobook where there's like this oh, mumbling. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It never gets to the point where it's it's not continuous through the audiobooks. Don't mm -hmm. don't think that's gonna happen. But there are times in the audiobook where there's like this this mumbling Absolutely. and and you're like, how would you sort through that constantly? And it kind of oh. like Yeah. It, I think it makes the audiobook that much more interesting to listen right. to. It's not something that you could experience reading the book. The you, know, book. you could imagine it, but. Right, that's cool. I like it when audiobooks um, have like a little something extra because sometimes you don't get what the book has. It'll include like a PDF of pictures or whatever, but sometimes books do have more. They have the illustrations, they have the photos mm -hmm. and stuff. And so I like it when there's something in an audiobook that makes it like more, that the book doesn't, the print book doesn't have. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Fairfield County District Library has disappointed me. They could only find Mare because I know at one point her mother does call her by oh. a name that is different. Her mother, she and her mother are. Yeah. But it wasn't Meredith. It was. I'll have to yeah. rewatch it. OK, I'll <laughs> report back. Uh, speaking of her mother, just a tangent, her mother's played by Jean Smart, and I was really excited to see her. And she has this other show on Hulu or on HBO right now called The uh, Hacks. And that was another reason why I got it, because that, and that's a comedy. She plays like this aging uh, stand up comedian. And um, so that was another reason I'm not going to cancel my free trial within my seven day window this time, um, because I actually want to finish watching Hacks and then I'll cancel my trial. <laughs> If anyone was concerned that I was going to continue to enjoy HBO for longer than that, no. <laughs> well, you got to see the end of Mayor too. I know, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, my next segue is that I did not realize Leanne Moriarty was Australian, um, but she is apparently. Uh, and another Australian author who we've talked about on here before is um, Jane Harper. Mm -hmm. um, her most recent book was The Survivors, which I listened to on audio and enjoyed. I believe it was set in Tasmania and it had an, an author with the appropriate accent. So that was enjoyable. Um, but the other book people have mentioned on here, I think actually Melanie mentioned in the comments, was The Dry, um, book by Jane Harper featuring a detective, featuring somebody with a job somewhere in a crime-ish field uh, named Aaron Falk. Um, and so this has now been made into a movie starring Eric Bana um, and it's already been made. It's in, um, oh, Love, Boone Harper from Carol. And so it's already been made. It's already premiered in Australia. Um, and now it's going to be showing in the U.S. And it had uh, quite a bit of a, like, people people in Australia seem to really like it. Um, and so hopefully uh, it will also get a good reception here. There's a second book that's actually like a series, I guess. Uh, there's a second book featuring Aaron Falk called Force of Nature, if you were interested in that. Uh, and the plot of The Dry is that Aaron Falk returns to the rural town where he was raised to attend the funeral of a childhood friend who appears to have killed his wife and child in a murder-suicide. He gets pulled into the case and realizes it has links to another mystery from 20 years ago. So um, anyway. <laughs> and it looks like uh, Mary is trying to peer pressure us into watching Joe Para Talks With You. Um, 
and she loves it and other people should love it. It's like the experience of wearing a wool sweater. Like it's just cozy, comfortable. I wrote it down in a legible handwriting on a page I'll never look at again, but maybe that will be enough. To Act of writing it down <laughs> does like help you store it in your memory. I have yeah. found. Yes. <laughs> we hope. Um, Kristen Hanna, her oh. um, Nightingale, her book, The Nightingale, or just Nightingale. I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt you because I just saw Melanie's comment. She says, Wool makes me itch. So apparently, <laughs> that's not the show for her, then, I guess, or <laughs> make it a different type of sweater. <laughs> <laughs> Very Plus, different reaction to that show. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, but, go ahead. Um, Kristen Hanna's Nightingale, which is a World War II story it's coming out it's being made into a movie also oh, okay. this November. so i don't know like, she's pretty popular like her mm -hmm. books they they go out really well so if you haven't read yeah. that yet pick it up before december and i actually i've never read her before have you i know she's really I've read a couple of her books not that one though okay. yeah i've uh i've never read her before but i know that like i'm always seeing people reading her so yeah, yeah her i will have to add something. i know that Nightingale in particular is one that I've had to buy several replacement copies of because mm -hmm. they've fallen apart and there's still like a waiting list for them. That's so. great. <laughs> also great is that Carol responded at nearly the same time, AKA itchy like a wool, wool sweater. So apparently they're on the same wavelength today, Melody and Carol, and that show is, we need a different metaphor. <laughs> yes. Um, Unless that's what Mary meant. Cause really all she said was, experience this wool sweater of a show. So maybe Mary needs to clarify, maybe it is itchy and weird. Maybe, maybe it makes you uncomfortable. And so does it make you like, sweaty and like kind of? <laughs> uh, I was thinking definitely not itchy. Let's just say comfy, but durable <laughs> wear when it's really cold. Okay, like. Your most, your coziest sweater. Yes. Or sweatshirt. Maybe like your softest hooded sweatshirt. I, I'm right by a dresser. I've got this sweater that I have had since middle school. This is like my coziest sweater. Aww. And this is the this is the benefits of doing your your um um show from your bedroom. This this is my I've had this sweater since Aww. I was in middle school. I love and that. It, it was like one of those oversized sweaters, but now I'm oversized, so but it still fits. Just not I love that. <laughs> no longer an oversized sweater. That makes me so happy. It is, and like the the threads on the one wrist have like all come undone, Aww. but I don't care. I still wear it, and every time I have to work on a day where I have to shovel my car out from the snow. That's the sweater I end up wearing to work that day. Oh, that makes me, that is such a delightful story. I really like that. And if you end up watching the uh, Joe Para Talks to You show, then I, I you should wear that. that. <laughs> yes. I hope it reminds you of it anyway. Yes. Um, I have one, I have another thing that I definitely want to talk about. I actually have two things. Okay. That if we can make it that far. Um, mm -hmm. If I can make it that far. I'm, I'm not feeling great. Like I'm quitting you, you mean? No, 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 no. <laughs> if my body doesn't, my body allows me to get this far. Um, I read an article recently that John Steinbeck, stop me if you've heard this. Um, apparently he has at least three unpublished novels. Two were destroyed at some point, probably by him. But the third has survived in an archive um, ever since being rejected for publication in 1930. And you will never guess, you would literally never guess what the plot of this story is. Um, it is a werewolf murder story. A town is being basically, there's a series of grisly murders. There's a cub reporter who's like trying to figure it out. And it turns out it's a werewolf. It's called Murder at Full Moon. And um, it was written under a pseudonym, Peter Pym, P-Y-M. Um, but it's never, like I said, it was rejected for publication at that time. That was well before he'd written, you know, what his, you know, his current, his actual published works. And he just like put it away or whatever. And um, so it's never seen the light of day. And there's a scholar of some kind, a professor who is trying to incur, who's like, you know, saying we should, we should publish this, but yeah. his, um, he must be the one who's seen it in the archives, but his literary agents 
say they want to uphold what Steinbeck wanted and don't want to exploit the works beyond the author's wishes. Um, but then the scholar saying he did attempt to have it published and he didn't destroy it. So dot, dot, dot. Um, <laughs> yeah. So the, it was just, it was the guy, the scholar, his name is Gavin Jones, and he has a book coming out called Reclaiming John Steinbeck. So I think probably as part of that research, perhaps is when he ran across this werewolf story. And he, he tries to explain how it really is still in the vein of Steinbeck, you know, these certain themes, uh, you know, what people in, in a mob or a group will do and whatever, whatever. But um, it is a werewolf story. That it, That is what it is. And I just thought that was very interesting. It is very interesting. And you're right, like he didn't destroy it. He did attempt to pu get it published. But even like once he got famous, he wasn't like, hey, hey, hey look at this that. earlier thing I did. So <laughs> right. Maybe they should publish it under the pseudonym. Right. So that while it is still out there for people to experience, it won't be on the show. Steinbeck. I think that that's a good solution. Yeah. And I do have to somehow think that they're thinking they're acting in best interest though, because if they publish it, they would make money, you know, like I would think that yeah. they are being thoughtful about this and intentional rather than just being money grubbing. So they must really feel what they're feeling. But yeah, I think publishing it under the pseudonym would be a good, uh, a good compromise because I think people would really love to read that. <laughs> yeah. I, I would definitely read that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, go ahead. You had two are, things. Are you me. sure? Okay. Well, had, this was actually more of a question for you. Um, I was oh. looking at some books and I was wondering, did you read the book before the coffee gets cold? No. Have you heard of that? The author is, I want to say Kawaguchi. And I brought it up because I, there's a second one coming out in a, what is now a series. So I shall hook you with that. Go ahead. Hoopla just had that as their Maybe that's what I was, maybe that's what pulled me in or why yeah. I clicked on it. Um, but I just feel like you might like it because it's a, there's a Tokyo cafe that's been serving coffee for over a hundred years, but it also can transport you through time. You have to like sit in a certain seat and you can't leave the cafe and you have to return to the present before the coffee gets cold. But you can be transported. And so the first book I think is like four visitors or something. And now there's a second one called Tales from the Cafe. And it just sounded like something you might like. And especially with the Japan connection. Yes. It's not just anywhere. It's not, I love Japan and I lived there for a while. So I have been, I've got that book like, I, I checked it out once, but I didn't start it. And uh, <laughs> which is awful. But it, I got it written down and I found, I actually found the, the title. I, Cause I do this thing where I will write down titles on scraps of paper and then put them in my pocket. And when I go to do my laundry, I'm like, what is this? And I pulled out before the coffee gets cold. But I didn't oh write down I'm like, is this a oh, wait. thing? Oh wait, Marianne. Mayor's name is Marianne. Thank you. Redemption. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, yes. sir, for coming. Um, but yes, I, I I will definitely read that book now since you have recommended well, it. So one, I just it, and I and I haven't. I've never even physically looked at it before. But just I must. Yeah. I must, it was probably that email from uh, Hoopla or whatever yeah. that I clicked on and was like, oh, I love well, I'm like, I would like I love the idea. So yeah, I'm. I'll, I will definitely give that one a try and report back how it is. Please do. Please do. And again, it's starting to be a series, so that's a, a plus, right? Right. And yes, redemption for the for the library. <laughs> I am no longer disappointed in you. <laughs> Did you have anything else? The only other thing I was going to mention, because I saw this news and I was very excited about it, um, Roxanne Gay mm -hmm. is going to have her own imprint with um, Grove Atlantic Publisher. Um, so like she'll, she said that she'll do like three titles a year, a mix of fiction, nonfiction, memoir. Um, oh. so she'll, she'll pick the books that get published. Um, she herself is a published author. She, she does all kinds of stuff. Um, she's, I think her two most well-known, um, are her, her memoir hunger 
and her book of essays, um, Bad Feminist, are like the two that she's most known for. However, I know her best for the role she played in one of my dreams. <laughs> Her most memorable role. Yes, her most memorable role was in my very own dream. Um, <laughs> it was a very long, very convoluted dream in which <laughs> she was um, a barista who was failing terribly at her job of making my coffee. She could not do it. Like there's steam happening and stuff is being spilled and like she just, she cannot cannot make my cup of coffee so the manager of the little coffee shop is rob morrow and he comes over to talk from you know um the alaska doctor he goes to alaska um what is the name of that show uh i don't know uh come on fairful county district library yeah i think the libraries you need to jump in on this um but he's he's a doctor. It was a TV show for like seasons and seasons. Um, in this little town in Alaska, he's uh, but he goes there. But anyway, in my dream, he comes over. Northern, Northern exposure. exposure. Yes, thank you. So he comes over and he's like apologizing for for the poor service. But then he starts like chatting me up, you know, because why wouldn't you chat me up, right? Exactly. So. <laughs> Like, I'm like all into this Rob Morrow and he's like all into me. But then I'm like, I really have to go. I've got this meeting I've got to go to. So I go and as I'm cutting through like the restaurant in this, because it's really fancy, like hotel convention center place, but there's a restaurant and I'm cutting through the restaurant and Melanie, Melanie's in the restaurant with um, her husband and three teenage kids. And she's like, Leah, come join me. I'm like, because she's like desperate to get out of it's very sullen teenagers. I don't know. Um, I'm like, no, I've got this meeting I've got to go to. And I also passed my mother who's having lunch with, um, oh, Winters. Uh, Anna Winter, the, the fashion person with the big. Oh, sunglasses. Anna Winter. Yeah. yeah. Yes. My mother is having lunch with her and she, and she also has the big sunglasses. And she's like, what do you think? And I'm like, mm, not really your look. Um, I love so, that you're in a hurry to get to a meeting, but you have time to pause and tell your mom she doesn't look good in those sunglasses. Right? And my, my mom was like, yeah, I didn't think they were really for me either. Um, but <laughs> so I get to my meeting and my meeting is with Paul Rudd. And I was like, oh, he was trying to keep me from Paul Rudd. Like what in the world? Because I love Paul Rudd. But then I was like, hmm. Maybe I really should be with him instead. Like, and that's like when I woke up with I was trying to choose between the two famous men. Well, Roxanne, I know to be just a bit Judith player and <laughs> somewhere Judith because I was at some point in the dream I had visited the Northwest, the not the Northwest, the Baltimore Branch Library. So I know that Judith was in that dream somewhere, but I don't remember that part of the dream as well. What an honor. But yeah, it sounds like everybody, it sounds like it was everybody you saw that day at work. Plus like the last two shows you watched like, and <laughs> the book you read by Roxanne. Like it was like all, it, the past, it, was, it all came together. Yeah. There were so many people in that dream and it's really rare for me to like, like there will be people in my dreams, but usually it's like just people like random people. But this one was like all people I knew. <laughs> He was a star-studded yeah. cast. Yeah. <laughs> so Melanie, yes. your mom, Anna Wintour. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, that actually reminds me, speaking of a star-studded cast, one more thing, uh, and emails from Hoopla. On Hoopla now is the audio of Tales of Beetle the Bard. Oh, Tales of Beetle the Bard for the first time on audio. And so you can listen to that for free on Hoopla. And what's exciting about it is that it is read by people from the Harry Potter film franchise. Um, it's read by, uh, I have everybody written down, but where? Um, Jude Law is one of them. Oh yes, Jude Law, Jason Isaacs, who plays Lucius Malfoy, Ivana Lynch, who plays Luna, and Bonnie Wright, who plays Ginny. Um, so the four of them are the narrators in that. It's only like an hour and a half long. It's a short thing of like, Wizard fairy tales, wizard folk. It's a very tales. short book, so yeah. Yeah, um, but that was just that. Speaking of star-studded cast, that's what reminded me of that. Um, I have already checked it out. I might listen to it. <laughs> yeah. 
end. Um, yes. It's, it's and that's, an hour and a half, so. Yeah. And that's a good reminder, like, especially now that it's like summer reading time, all of the Harry Potter books are available on Hoopla, no waiting. So yeah. that the is a very. Wizarding World is available on there. So it's the Harry Potter books as you think of them, but also Fantastic Beasts and uh, uh, Cursed Beetle the Bard. Cursed, cursed mm -hmm. Child. What is cursed it? Child. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was like, I got that name wrong, but. No, um, you didn't. Yeah, so that's yeah. that's all on there on Hoopla. No waiting. And in just a bunch of languages, too, different languages. Like if yes, you know, yes, as we learned. If you <laughs> want to listen to it in French, it's there. <laughs> yeah, so if you want to brush up on your language learning skills over the summer via, you know, a beloved is, series. Is it the French version of... I think it's the French version of Harry Potter. They had to change um, Tom Riddle's middle name to Elvis so that, you know, where it's it Tom on. Riddle, I am Vol yeah. Lord Voldemort. Yeah. They had to change his name to Elvis to have the <laughs> correct. Um, I did not yes, know that, that but I am absolutely, I have a different piece of paper that's always floating around, writing that down <laughs> as a trivia question. <laughs> Yes. For some time in the future. So if you're on here now, the four people who are viewing us now will. Uh, I know Harry Potter trivia that Allison doesn't I know. I didn't know that one. So I'm going to write that down. And if you're one of the four people watching who, if we do Harry Potter trivia in the future, you have an insight into that answer. Except that Leah thinks it might be the French version, but maybe it's not. So I will double check, but I'm. Not and I'll double check with the French. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, on that note, I guess uh, next week we'll be here. We'll be celebrating our one year anniversary of doing the show. Uh, I'm not, we're not 100% sure what that will entail yet, but. Uh, We've been doing this for a year, Allison. It's crazy. I know. I know. Yes. I know. Who would have thought? <laughs> I don't know what we thought. I like, I, I feel like when you say who would have thought, and I feel like. I could have thought this pandemic would be literally the next five years of our lives, or you could have told me it would be like a show. Like I just, yeah, we thought we were getting a three week vacation from work. I knew nothing. I knew nothing. So, all right. Well, I will see you next week and we'll see you next week, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.